Gaines, by the way, Lance. Hi, everyone, and welcome. I'm Laura Cadden with the Wealth Press editorial team, coming to you live from downtown Baltimore. Our guests are in Florida, lucky ducks, and Francisco Bermea is manning the chat and handling the technical aspects from Texas. Say hi, Francisco. <clears throat> Where are you? He's not going to go live. He's here somewhere. <laughs> With mute, yeah. I'm right here. How's it going? Hi. <laughs> we have a very special traders roundtable for you today. Um, Jeff Zanieri and Lancey Polito, of course. So you guys have been really busy this morning. You've been banking lots of gains, and we'll get to that in just a moment. Before we do, I do want to talk about the CPI, the good news, the possible plateauing of inflation. What do you guys think? Lance, what's your take? Do you think this is, we are seeing a plateau and are you seeing interesting options flows? Like what's going on? Um, I don't look at economic numbers. You know, people were worried yesterday. They go, oh, are you going to put in a train? Why are you buying Tesla and Apple calls ahead of the CPI? I go, who cares? I just follow my signals. Um, so I don't know. I mean, I feel like for average people, inflation is still high. I mean, Ford came out and said they're raising the price of a Ford Lightning truck starting at like 85 grand. Uh, I remember when you could buy a nice luxury truck for 40 grand. So I, I think, you know, all the numbers are made up, uh, kind of like the recession word. But the flow and the junk ain't never been better. So, uh, you know, earnings don't matter. Stocks only go up. It's fun. Trading has been amazing. And uh, it's the return of the, the growth stocks in my book. How about you, Jeff? What do you think? Did the reading surprise you? Uh, is it changing your outlook short term? The reading was, was a surprise. It was, uh, it's, not, it's never surprising when they're, when they're trying to manufacture positive spirits. And, uh, you know, I wrote in my, in my, in my weekly uh, report that I put out on Monday that anticipates these types of things that a weak number would have a relief rally, which is what we're seeing today. Uh, I think it's, I'm a little bit skeptical about how sticky the relief rally is going to be. I think a lot of this stuff was priced in. I think it's going to be a lot of two-way trading, but just like Lance said, junk is back in style. The, uh, you know, the meme kids that have been hiding out in mom's basement eating, uh, it, ramen pizza noodles. rolls, eating ramen and pizza rolls. They're back out in restaurants, ordering lobster tails, having martinis. I'm happy about that. I like prosperity, but, uh, I think people are going to have to cool it a little bit and, you know, just let's wait it out for a little, let's see, let's give it a couple of days worth of, uh, returns to see if indeed, like, you know, all the bad stuff is behind this. Well, let's talk about meme stocks we're traders here. Bed Bath & Beyond, 136, I'm 130% up since August. GameStop, AMC. Um, do you think this is going to continue? Are you trading these things? Jeff, you don't trade these typically, do you? Yeah, He's I would. He's I trade degenerate. everything. Yeah, I mean, have you, Laura, have you been in a Bed Bath & Beyond? There's like, what, three people in there? And they're like, <laughs> they pick up a pillow and then they argue about it for, you'll see a husband and a wife argue about a pillow. Should they pay $27 for it? The wife will say, I saw it on Amazon last night for 14 those put, that shop is going to shut kids. So if you're buying it, it's on pure speculation and, you know, the greater fool theory. So I don't know. I like, I, I, I'll differentiate between the meme stocks. Like AMC is actually a company that was left for dead, but Top Gun Maverick came out and everybody went back to the movie theater. So they could have a business down the line. GameStop, if they really get involved in like really like you know, owning the entire gaming community. And I'm talking esports, gambling, the whole thing. That has upside. But Bed Bath & Beyond, what are they doing? Like overpriced candles? Hello, are you kidding me? Have you heard of the internet? Lance, <laughs> what about you? <laughs> well, they got that investment by that Ryan GameStop Chewy guy, whatever his name is. I mean, they are, I wouldn't short them. I'll tell you that much. The problem is, and... You know, I, I say this as a degenerate junkie trader who loves to yellow weekly options and, you know, dice roll. The volatility now in the options is so high that you may get, you know, a 5% move lower AMC or Bed Bath & Beyond, but the puts are going to be down in value. So 
the the options market is now caught on to this crazy volatility so it's really hard to play the memes instead you could just do junk like i've been doing and when i mean junk stocks i mean highly shorted stocks they're not considered meme stocks but they're crap stocks like i've been buying cheap you know five to ten dollar uh stocks lately and buying like 30 cent call options and you get lucky because it is a little bit of luck involved. I'm not going to lie. You know, you hit a home run. Like I bought some Scenix calls, Century Aluminum. It's the worst chart in the whole market. And it, it, it's rock bottom. It's like, you know, I'll pull it up on the screen. You think any, you know, guy on CNBC or any, you know, smart person is going to say, hey, let me buy this piece of junk that went from 25 to eight bucks in a, in a few months. No, but I will. Today, the stock's up 15%, made over 50% on my call options. If I held, if I held them, I would have made about uh, 300%. But that's another story. But, um, you know, it just, just trading them, you know, out there, you just have to realize when you're trading options, especially once everyone's in the party, you're usually too late. Uh, so you can, it's hard to short. You, if you want to short, like people were, uh, I was doing live trading yesterday. People are like, oh, Ro Roblox is crashing on earnings. You know, is Roblox a good company? Hell no. You know, they make the little Pokemon Minecraft game for the kids. Stock went from 25 to 50 in like a month. That's a double. You know, the stock comes out with earnings. Craters yesterday down to like 38 bucks. And I'm, I'm at the gym doing cardio, trying to burn off these tacos. And, <laughs> you know, I'm like, crap. People are messaging me. Why didn't you buy puts? Lots of puts hit the scanner. You missed out. You could have hit a double or a triple. And I'm like, yeah, you're right. I could have, should have. <laughs> and then today the stock's only down 6% and the puts are down 45, 50%. So, so now I feel like a genius for not buying the puts. Cause if I would have bought the puts, even though the stock's down, I would have lost, you know, half my money. So it, it, it's trades like that where you got to be uh, you got to be selective and you don't want to get married to anything. You know, now's not the time to go all in. It's not the time to push. I mean, everyone should have made their, to be honest, their whole year last month. That's how good it was. Somebody's asking about your WWE belt. Do you want to explain about that? Uh, I, I, we'll, we'll get to that a little, little bit later. We'll get, we'll get to all that right. A little bit later. It's a tease. Yeah. yeah. It's a tease. Yeah. You mentioned earnings. Did you guys see any really good plays from the earnings? Which companies are you watching or avoiding after that? Earnings don't matter right now. Earnings matter <laughs> less even in the, like the CPI is moving everything. Like, you know, as, as little as economics matter and how as BS as the number is, uh, er, like Coinbase had a terrible number. Look at, he pulled up coin. Yeah, we were thinking the same thing. Um, stocks ripping, like terrible, ter like horrendous number. And uh, yeah, stocks got a great momentum. They had BlackRock come out and say, we're going to put BlackRock, the world's largest asset managers, like, hey, we're going to steer our clients onto your crypto exchange in particular. So it doesn't matter what these people are reporting. People want to believe again. They want to fall in love, Laura. They want to, they want to forget about the, this, this nasty, what was it? The, what did the Biden administration call it? The cold, dark winter, whatever the hell they call that COVID winter. That People want to get out of that. And they want to get back into this mood of... Let's get rich, zero fear, yeah, YOLO. Yeah. And so as awesome as that is, that also suggests to me that we have another wave of, uh, of, of inflation and insanity and another puke inevitably coming because people don't YOLO with the money they need to pay the rent or buy tacos, as Lance would say. They YOLO with some extra cash. And so there's still a little bit of froth in the system. And uh, yeah, that's, that's a sign that we have some more digesting to do, in my opinion, but it's going to be great trading, the best trading, as Lance said. Do you want to add anything to that, to that Lance? Oh, I mean, it is, it is you know, you, you go out, you go on Instagram or you go out to the, to the uh, you know, night out on the town, you still see people who want to be the Grant Cardone and turn $2,500 <laughs> That they got when they were 18 and three billion dollars and drive the ferrari and have the private helicopter you still have all those people who right. now they have a, they have a little bit of life they have yeah. a little bit that, that light is, is shining a little bit they're Shut gravitating on. they're thinking 
man, this is it. I'm gonna <clears throat> gonna meet the love of my life and go on a trip to the beach, and it's gonna be dandelion and roses and pop champagne and bubbly all night. No, you know it's not the case. But people have that thought now because a you're starting to see the markets catch a little bit of a bid. You're starting to see the cryptos go up a little bit. You're starting to see these meme stocks return where people are, you know, I'm part of the AMC ape army. And yeah, that money comes back quick. People get that, they get that feeling that they're missing out, you know, like really quick. They get FOMO is really strong. FOMO, still. FOMO is strong, which means that people aren't still traumatized enough. The market needs to <laughs> inflict more trauma. Right. Just, just when it gets safe again, that's when they're going to get whacked. And, uh, and, and, and I think if this continues, which is, and I want to be clear, it's a phenomenal trading environment, but the longer this continues and the more you start seeing, you know, these, these crazy high flyers, like Coinbase stock doubled in, in what, a month or so, that is usually a sign that, hey, things are starting to peak out again, you know, sadly look for the overall market to decline. And that's when I think you know, September, October, it's going to be pretty nasty. But in the meantime, ride the wave. I mean, it's yeah. fun. Yeah. So let's start talking about waves and riding and gains. So Lance went three for three in your wiretap service this weekend. You closed a 60% winner with charge point, 60% winner with bang trades. Today you booked 50, almost 50% overnight with blitz. And Jeff, you had overnight winners last week, um, APA 25%, LMT 40%, CCL and burn notice, another winner last night, some big gainers coming. So you're seeing lots of successes, but from different strategies. So it's kind of across the board. Let's explore that. So Jeff, am I right? You have like more of a macro approach, yet sometimes you use a short-term contrarian strategy for your burn notice. Mm -hmm. Maybe you could break down some of your big winners. Tell us, tell us how you find these. Well, the beauty of this market is if you're nimble and you're, and you're paying attention, like you're really laser focused on pre precise moments and timing to enter the market, like at the end of the day or the open, for instance, you get opportunities where they exaggerate moves like crazy into the close. Like today, we have a massive bullish tape. So some of these stocks like Carnival that Lance just pulled up, puts are going to be like almost like worthless by mm -hmm. the close. So you can go in and buy, and that's what's really cool about a contrarian strategy is instead of paying up, you just have to kind of be right or kind of have the, the environment change just a tiny bit. And just for the open, it doesn't have to even last all day to make money. So I've been, I've been fading extraordinarily well, long and short, which is weird because the market's been bullish, et cetera, long and short. And, you know, I think I had one loser in the last two weeks, in two weeks in burn notice, which is awesome. That's how you got to do it. Because if you look at what the market's really done in August, it's done jack shit. It's been in the same place. It's gyrated back and forth, even with today, slightly up on the month. But if you're nimble, you can just you can just keep pounding and just like padding it, padding, padding the book and just keep moving, stick and move, stick and move, stick and move. That's the mentality you have to have right now. Don't fall in love, stay, stay nimble, stay agnostic, and just leave yourself open to the next situation to, to, to put your capital into. And always have dry powder. Like don't have all your money in the yeah. market. That, that is one thing I, I spoke about. I did a member video, uh, I think it was Monday night, or Tuesday. I can't remember. I do. I do so many videos and stuff. But I said, keep your dry power. So when it's time to push, push. And it's yeah. going to set up beautifully when it's time. We did that with WWE with the massive winner. Um, I've done that in Array, A-R-R-Y, which... Is anyone still holding array calls? Because if so, those calls went from about a buck thirty to over seven thirty. <laughs> you know, always have uh, always have a uh, dry power out there. So when it's time to push, you can go big, and that's when you know you could potentially really uh, uh, you know do very well in trading. And how are you getting your gains? I know you follow unusual options activity. I know you have a new indicator. Are you primarily using that? 
What about chart uh, so, patterns? Yeah, so Ray, the solar stock. I mean, I'll, I'll be honest. Uh, I sold on the 30% pop, and now the stock's up another five bucks. So uh, <laughs> I, I wish I wish I held it. I did first yeah, but you don't yesterday. go broke taking that money, man. You don't, I you don't know, know when it's but change. You don't know when things I know. But that's oh, training. Know. That's discipline. That's the discipline. You got to let it ride out, but you got it. You got to book winners. I'm writing that every morning. And people are like, oh, really? I'm like, yeah, book the winner and let's move on. We'll have enough. We're going to go for another winner because there's action. I think the big mistake people make is that, you know, like the, like the apes, they'll, they'll, they'll buy really small. When the when the stock's in the basement, and then the and then the stock will move up fifty percent, and, and they, they come all... out of mom's basement, they start pounding their chest, they beg Uncle Louie for a five thousand dollar loan, they they size up at the end of the move, at the end of the move, and then they puke it, and then they puke the stock in the basement two weeks later, and they rinse and repeat. So you have to like inverse that that inclination to do all the wrong shit at all the wrong times, which is hard because human nature. Like our minds are set up to, to make in, like instinctive decisions when things feel good and feel safe. And that's exactly the opposite of what you should be doing. You should be a little bit cautious when everybody's like feeling safe. And when people are like, wow, the planet's done, it's going to end. You should be a little more optimistic in, in terms of pricing things out. Yeah, it is. You, you can especially with the meme stocks and the retail crowd. Like here's AMC, for example. Everyone started talking about AMC a couple of days ago after it made its move. No one wanted to buy it at 16, 17, but everyone wants to buy it at 25. You know, uh, my big thing in trading is think what not, don't play your hand. It's like a poker game. Don't, let's say you have a, a, pair, a pair of kings, right? You don't want to play your pair of kings, even though you have the second best hand and starting off in Texas Hold'em. You want to know what everyone else is playing. Maybe uh, uh, maybe your opponent has a, uh, a pair of queens. And if you know that, you can get the most money possible from them because they, the they have the third best hand. You have the second best hand. So think about what everyone else is doing. If you see everyone out on, on FinTwit and they're saying, hey, buy AMC, probably the best time to sell it right? Sell it to those buyers out there. When you see everyone talking about, oh, wow, I love, uh, I love Amazon here. It's the greatest stocks in sliced bread. Well, they probably love it after it made its $20 move. So that's when you should sell it. And then when nobody wants to buy something, that's the time you want to buy. So it's kind of that, you know, you're probably going to be wrong. And that's just being honest. I don't care how smart you are. You're playing against the smartest minds in the world. And especially you're not just going to step in the stock market and you know, be like, Hey, I'm better than everyone else. Cause not, you're going to get whacked really quick. <laughs> well, I want to talk about your approaches and how different they are because you have an event coming up in just a couple of weeks, something that everybody's really excited about, right? The two of you are going to meet in person. It's called blitz versus burn. Um, it's going to be in Ponte Vedra beach in mm -hmm. Florida. Um, I know the spots are very limited but we still have spots left right now for people to be able to attend and hang out with you guys. You mentioned poker. I understand there's going to be a poker tournament, which is awesome. Do you guys want to tell us a little bit about that? In fact, we even have, I think we have some slides about it. There we go. Um, yes. Let me, let me read this short deck and then me and Jeff will, will give you, give you guys and girls the real down low of what's going to go down. So we have something really cool for you guys. Uh, you know, Jeff, Big dog out there, lots of uh, 700 milli on the fund out there with the Swedish boys in Miami, popping bubbly out there, the good old days. <laughs> so we wanted, <laughs> we wanted to personally. I'm having you. flashbacks, Lance. You're giving me flashbacks. Hey, you know it might happen here in Ponte Vedra Beach uh, <laughs> in the end of the month. You might have some more. So we're gonna have two full days at the beach, literally. Uh, we're going to be trading live, not just talking strategy or saying, yeah, here's a good 50 day moving average. None of that stuff. No real stuff out there trading side by side with you guys and girls out there. It's the first ever blitz versus burn trade a thon. It's August 28th to August 30th. There will be 
full VIP access out there. Here's what you can expect. A complete breakdown of how I trade institutional order flow, or as the marketers call it, unusual option activity. The key metrics behind selecting the right option expiration strike, how to read flow, how to read the tape, how to read time and sales, how to set up your charts. We'll do two plus live trades in person. Probably do a lot more. I've done 40 today. Uh, trades from the str same strategies that have produced some damn good trades this year. Let's just be honest. Uh, I'll, do, I'll be trading my indicator live. If you have any questions, obviously bring your laptop. I'll have my laptop up there. Uh, basically, we have even more. Jeff's going to bring the heat. Jeff, what are you going to talk about? Do you? Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, I'm going to do a deep dive into the burn. Uh, I'm going to teach people how to think contrarian, how to put their big boy pants on and fade the moves. That's the hardest thing to do in the market. It's, it's how I knew, you know, I used to hire and train traders. It's how I knew I had a real one, a live one. When they could sit in that chair, a lot of kids would come to me from like Princeton and be super smart. And then you put them in the chair and then you give them a computer and you say, there's a few million bucks, do something. And when it's like buying something that's crashing at the close and they're like, oh, I just can't I'm wait for the perfect price. I'm like, next, next. So I'm going to show you how, how to put your big boy pants on and do like the real, you know, the real big dogs on the street, do it. And uh, like Lance was talking about and how you can make 64%, 54%, 38% in a few hours, overnight, overnight. And like I said, I've had one loser in that strategy in two weeks. The system weighted average return and annual, annually is 500 plus percent on the options in this market. Yeah, it's like 550 today, Lance. Oh. You better bring that belt. You better bring, <laughs> you, you better, you gotta go to oh. Balco. You better cork your bat. You better put powder on the baseball. You better bring all of that shit. Cause I'm bringing, I'm bringing the heat to this event. So enjoy your last few weeks with that belt. Like I said, I'm going to have a beautiful armoire, nice glass one to showcase it every time we do this show. Listen, right behind listen, me. Listen, I've almost doubled my account <laughs> in, in a month in a month and a half. All right. The champ this belt's coming with me. I got it. I get it. Six, that, that's 16 pounds of pure gold, although it makes a worthy competitor. Gold. That is a worthy competitor. So we're going to do all this in real time. We're going to have fun. We're going to talk the markets in a way that you could never hear us talk. Uh, over like one of these things because it's going to be in person so we could be a little bit more forthright or blunt i should say believe it or not i have more i have a more blunt mode than this one and so i think it's going to be an awesome learning opportunity for everyone yeah and there is the link if someone could post it in the chat the link or they could call the number link in the chat please armand says it's wealthpress.com slash bvb Hopefully we have some people who could post a link in the chat. Thank you, Francisco. Or they can call that number. It's 877-212-2646. We will be there August 28th live. We'll be doing lots of cocktails, lots of cigars, <laughs> lots of, uh, well, a charity poker tournament because we don't want yeah, we to anyone think it's rigged. Um, oh, we'll have guys gals young old when we were in the money show in vegas me and jeff we were. were the two biggest celebrities there and we were at the <laughs> poker room and blackjack table by 7 8 a.m but that's another there was, story it was three hours in the morning where we were still awake before the conference opened so we had to use it properly All right, what else are we going to do we're going to sit around <laughs> and drink tea no we're going to gamble um we had people we had we had college kids like kids were like 20 years old yeah. asking us super really i mean really smart kids by the way on trading and then we had people probably what jeff 70 years old yeah it was strange, strange. It was practicing really strange. doctors we had a, a ups driver we had a a gal from vegas who was tanner than i was and trades better than i am or at least it sounded like she did and probably did i had a uh, I, had I had like a chinese oligarch and i was like shocked because all i did did for like most of 2020 was talk about how bad china was like <laughs> <laughs> remember our boy where's our buddy was like can i take a picture with you i was like yeah Don't where is our guy internet. who was hanging out with us you know who i'm talking about jeff no he was out there doing the show with us uh, oh yeah 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 vietnamese dude right where is he we have his picture somewhere he was great oh, he, he was, he a, was a real dude. good guy that was a great dude Correct. but uh we're gonna have a lot of fun 
It does the Blitz versus Burn Trade a Thon. Check it out if you can, if you're already signed up. Thank you. Uh, we'll be going over everything pretty much. What's wild I mean, about this is these are two of the best trading systems in like financial publishing in the world right now. I would say I would put it up against anyone. I would. Yeah. And so like, I don't no. think we, I don't think we talk about that enough. I think everyone takes for granted that you should go like 10 out of 11 in a row or be up 500% in a year where the market's down 10%. This is, you know. It's great. Yeah, these aren't no, it's, these it's, aren't no these are fairy good tale, strategies. Yeah. back tested, want to yeah. be, use the option high of the day. No, we're sending real trades. Yeah. You know, from time and sales, everything's trade track approved. We get audited our trade results. Heck, if I wanted to be perfect, I'd say, hey guys, sell Scenics. It's up 17% now. I sold it, you know, when the, when, when the stock was up 6%, I made 54% on my on the call options. Now the call options are probably up 200%. Yeah. If I wanted to use 200%, I'd be like every other fake out there. But I'm And not. it's not going to be like a gold bug convention where like everyone's sitting around saying, gold is money, gold must go higher. Like we're going to talk, <laughs> we're going to teach you how to fish too. We're going to talk yeah. trade. People are asking if you need a referee. Oh, no. The referees can't handle us. Let's be <laughs> honest. They can't. Referees handle. are going to be collateral damage. Come on now. Yeah, we're, we're, we're two Brahma bulls <laughs> too out there. Way too yeah. savage. Trying to make as much money as possible. Listen, if you guys want to go and, and sell the SPX 3,000 strike puts for October to make 2%, hopefully, and risk $98 to make $2, we ain't for you. If you want to buy freaking some cheap weekly or monthly option and, and you know try to hit a home run, we are your guys. Out the beauty there. of this, the beauty yeah. of this is it's like, it's going to be a win-win situation because it's not really like, you know, two people We're different, right? Like, obviously we're clearly different. We have different strategies, but like, we both love making money. And we, so like, if you, <laughs> so like, I'll flip out of my trade and put on the blitz trade if it's working. I'm that kind of like, I'll, I'll join his team in the middle of the thing if it's making money. So it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. Trust me. Yeah, it is, it is going to be a very good time. It's a beautiful spot. And uh, where's the picture of this thing? It's a beautiful spot. You know, if you want to go, go on a mini vacation, ride the golf cart around. That's what people do here. They eat their they eat their their flounder and broccoli. They get their tan. They hit their hole in ones. Why well, don't I hit like a it's double salmon? Bogey. It's salmon, Lance, with the sauce Salmon the in side. Florida, although sauce we don't have any. Yeah. You go to the nice the beaches bird. there. The water's <laughs> clear. Uh, it, it's just, it's very nice. Very pretty. You leave, you drive your Bentley with the top down. You leave the keys in the car. There's no crime. It's all, you know, Oh, very, you read uh, what Devin wrote. I trade blitz and burn. My account is up 96%. In the last there we week. go there. Thank you, Devin. That's how it is. It's been that good. Will it continue to be that good? Knock on wood. I don't make any promises or guarantees, but it's been really good trading. Uh, what else? Look at, Oh, there's our guy. There he is. This is, this guy's <laughs> fantastic. We, wherever he is, we need to get him in, uh, in Pawnee yeah. Vidra. He was great. You know, so picture this like massive, so this thing, the show is called The Money Show, just to give you an idea of what it was like. It was like this, the largest, I think one of the largest convention centers in all of Las Vegas in the Paris. And they had yeah, yeah. about 30 financial guru type people like me and Lance that are all over, people you would recognize from Steve Forbes to Sir Templeton, people like that. Mark Mobius was there, uh, a bunch of people. And so, and then they have like these breakout rooms uh, within this massive conference center. And so I walked in and I walked into a few of these rooms and it was like, it was like a wake or something. There was like four people in there, very somber. And I was like, oh shit, what the hell did I sign up for out here in Vegas? Why am I out here? So then <laughs> Lance was like the first of us to have his breakout session. And I walk in and it was like AC freaking DC showed up. There was like 250, 300 people, like in a small room, jam packed. And about everyone was like, Oh, you're Jeff. You work Jeff. Is it down in here? You're because I was just sitting there, you know, in my suit, trying to be incognito in the back as much as I can be, anyways. And uh, they were like, We're members already. We didn't even know you were going to be here. And so we fed off of that. We had a lot of fun. Uh, so that's how we got the idea for this. A lot of people that were there were like, why don't you all have your own thing? 
And we're like, well, if we do, it's not going to be just like, you know, walking around booths and we give you guys a presentation. We want it to be more immersive. We want to do it where we are actually trading the market instead of yep. talking about it in some hotel. We want to be sitting there in the market. So do you guys you know, know the venue? that's how they came up with it. Huh? Uh, the venue is Atlantic. What's the venue? Someone, uh, Fran, Atlantic Beach. It's like, it's Ponte Vedra slash Atlantic Beach. It's a, it's a nice hotel. Um, one Ocean Resort and Spa. One Ocean Resort and Spa. Thank you, Josiah. Oh, <laughs> last, time I, last time I got a, 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 what is it, a feet? What is it, pedicure? I, uh, they were doing my ankles and it, I got tickled and I kicked the poor girl right here. And I've never gotten another uh, spa pedicure ever again. They'll never let you back in. <laughs> no, never. I mean, I was taking some tequila <clears throat> shots while getting it done, but that's another story. <laughs> Um, so it's at Atlantic Beach, Florida, um, at the One Beach, One Ocean Beach Resort and Spa. That sounds heavenly. But we're actually out of time, too. So thank oh. you, guys. Thanks for giving us the skinny, for telling us about your wins, about the latest market news. We only talk about our winners. We have no losers. That's how good we are. <laughs> Not ever. No. <laughs> I can totally see, lawyer, I can see like the lawyer cart just drove past my house. You know, know. right, right, right. <laughs> they have Listen, like a, the bat. We're running hot. Out. How hot will it go? I don't know, but you know, always use proper risk management and all that stuff and trading. And we'll go over that uh, with the event as well because it's very important. You know, if you're doing <laughs> short-term options, your risk capital compared to more conservative yeah strategy. we're going to go into risk management we're going to go into proper sizing because lance and i are not playing financial advisor on television we're not looking to no. replace your financial advisor we're here to teach you how to trade you guys that have joined blitz and burn the ones that specifically that are coming to the blitz and burnathon you're not looking for a robo advisor to put you in a 15 year uh long position in amazon you're looking to go every night with a new trade <laughs> open a jackpot in the morning and hitting streaks where you go nine out of 10 winners, you trade it. So trading account should be a separate bucket of money than yep. your long-term life money, just to be clear. So we're not sitting here and trying to be, you know, cowboys with all your dough or replace your financial advisor or say, don't save for retirement. That's BS. What we're saying is we know you guys are traders. We know you're going to trade in the market. Here's how you do it correctly. Here's how you do it properly. Exactly. So if you want to, if you want to feed onto that, Show up at this event. It's going to be awesome. I hope oh. you all can join us. It's going to be amazing. And that's all for today. Thank you all. Thank you. Have a great day. Call the number. Click on the link. See, See you, Lance. Lance. Talk to you soon. Thank you, Laura. Bye. Thank you.